I'd like to take this opportunity to explain a little bit more about Mega Choir and kind of how to play it and what components are in it. It comes in a very large box because it holds a 15 by 13 plastic playing board and we made it exactly the same size as the board plus there is a lot of other components to make all the fun that's generated by this game. The board is like I say made of plastic and it has 182 hexagon spaces and then there's 182 corresponding hexagon tiles that fit into the space. The main objective of Mega Choir is to generate the most money out of any player. It's best played with three to six players, and it doesn't matter how the game goes, every game is different because of how the tiles end up getting laid. But you need to try and mix your investing so that you generate the largest pile at the end of the game of money, pile of money at the end of the game. There's 14 different companies, there's seven hotels, seven corporations that you can use to build. Um, the tiles all go in one bag. They're all shuffled and put in one bag, and each player starts with 12 tiles. Um, the players put one tile out on the board, each player, before they draw their 12, they put out one, one, one tile, and the closest tile to A1 is the player who goes first. So A1 goes there, B1, C1, so the closest one to A1 is the one who goes first. So they draw their 12 tiles first, and then everybody else counterclockwise draws their tiles out of the bag. And we have tile holders that will come with that to hold the tiles. And for Mega Choir 2, they've been enlarged from the original ones that were in Mega Choir. But after everybody's got their 12 tiles, the first player goes and plays G4. So then it goes around. The second player happens to throw out I4. Third player comes along, and we've got two, two tiles out there. So that player notices, oh, I can connect with G4. Now, the beauty of the hexagons in Mega Choir is that you can connect in all directions. The game can go everywhere on this board, spreading in all directions. So the third person has put down G5. When two connect in any direction, it forms a company. So that person can pick which company they want to make this, this, this corporation here. So there are 14 different companies, like I said, with seven hotels and seven corporations. The two hotels, two corporations are a larger price. They are $400 range when you start the, start the company. In the middle, we have three for the hotels, three for the corporations, and they start at $300 a share. And the lower stocks for these four lower companies start at $200 a share. So depending on where you're at in the game with your money or finances and you get a chance to open a company, you need to just be selective of which one you're picking and what you can afford to, to put up there. So player number three puts that up there and they're gonna grab something in the middle of the road they decide to put up an Arcadia Hotel. Well, because they opened that company, they get one free share. The bank gives them one free share for opening that company. And in Mega Choir, you can buy six shares on a turn. So that person can then purchase the six, because you start with $12,000 also. Have a set of money, and everybody is given $12,000 at the beginning, so when it comes time that you can buy six shares, then the only thing that's open on the board at this time right now is that Arcadia. And if this person buys the six shares of Arcadia along with the free one that they got, then they will have a majority if the next player buys six. If the next player buys six Arcadia, this player is still going to be ahead of them in a majority situation. So now the fourth player comes up. And they look at the situation and they decide, you know what, I wanna open a company too. So the fourth player opens a company and decides to pick Physics Corporation, which is $400 a share. So that person gets a free share of Physics. And then they decide that they want to keep their company, so they're gonna, they're gonna just buy six of those also. And at six at 400 bucks, that's 2,400 bucks. So now, 
we're back to player number one. And player number one decides that they want to build Arcadia. Now that's not a good move in a game because player one hasn't purchased any stocks and that will cost them a higher price because they just increased Arcadia. But we're just doing a demonstration here to show you how the game goes. So player one plays that, raises the price of Arcadia. Now they decide that, well, I want to have an investment in both of them in case one of these companies go out because they're close together. I want to invest in both. Player one can buy six shares, so they're going to buy three Arcadia at six or at three hundred apiece, so nine hundred dollars, and they're going to buy three Physics at four hundred dollars apiece, so that's twelve hundred. So they got twenty one hundred dollar purchase here for player number one, and they have a second majority because of what's been purchased. They have a second majority in each motel that's open right now, so. The person who is the second player who had Arcadia decides that it's their, well, it's their turn to play. So they decide to take out the Physics Corporation. Once you play a peg that connects two companies, this is what it was. And once you play a peg that connects two companies, the larger company always takes out the smaller company. Now, if they'd both been the same size, if they've both been the same size, then the person who's playing the peg, the person playing that peg gets to decide which one goes out. They can take this one out, or they can take the physics out. It's because they're the same size. It's their choice when it goes out. But in this scenario, this one is bigger, so physics will go out. So at the time, we have two players that have physics. We have the person who opened it, which has seven in the majority, and then the first player who played, who bought three on their turn, they're a second majority. And since that was worth $400 for physics, because it had two on it, $400, then the person who has first gets paid $4,000. The person who has second gets paid $2,000 or half. It's all it gets paid out, a first and a second majority, the only thing that gets paid out. But at the same time, now that the company's gone, then they get to decide what to do with their shares. They can either sell them back to the bank or they can keep them if they're going to open again. And if one of these players already has a peg to open again because everything is played all around the board, if they have somewhere to open again, they may decide to keep them. Otherwise, they can just sell them back to the bank, seven of them, 400 bucks, $2,800, and use it to go on. Um, the only person that gets to buy stock on that turn is the person who laid the peg, which was the second player in this scenario. They get to purchase their six shares now. Well, the only thing on the board in this scenario is, is Arcadia, and they're the ones that started it, so they're probably gonna wanna buy six of them, but now they've increased. They were 300 to begin with. Now with that made it 400, five, six, 700. Now it's gone up to $700 a share. There's an information card that's provided that will tell you what the companies start at and what they increase to as they get more, more uh, pegs. It goes up to six, and then it'll go six to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30. Each time, it adds value to your stocks that you've purchased because now every stock that you own that you bought at $300 is now worth $700. Now, this continues throughout the game, throughout over the whole board. And it's such a large board that, that they're played all over the place. And there's, there's different games going on in different places, essentially, since everything is so far apart. And so the game evolves, changes as it goes. People take over power at one time where they're ahead in the game with money, but then other people go because their company grows bigger. Now, a company will become safe when it gets to 21 tiles. It can't be taken out by any company after it gets to 21, it's safe. Um, it can take out other companies, but it cannot be taken out itself. These company markers that we made for Megacquire were just a simple tile, but they were designated for the company that it was. 
Just a simple tile to put on there to show what company it is. For Mega Choir 2, instead of just a simple tile, we're going to have a double tile for the lower price companies, and we're going to have a medium tile for the medium companies, and a taller tile for the most expensive companies. That way, when they're on the board, you can visually see, you know, is that a is that a lower price, higher price, medium price. Now, I've only just sat here and stacked tiles together to, to illustrate it, but the artist drawing is on the Kickstarter project that shows what they actually look like because um, they're all fused together. This is just a stack together, but it will, they'll be painted the color of the company and they'll have the designation on the top. So they will just be a larger, like pink tile in this case, that'll be on top of your company when you open it and during gameplay. Now, we'd like to show you a finished game. This was a finished game that was played a couple of years ago um, and how it finished and, and just illustrating how the hexagon tiles allow it to to just form in all directions i mean even even quasar here is squeezing out the ability to take over another company that was in the middle of of two others as it grew these companies got to 21 they became safe so when they're safe you cannot play a tile that connects between them so during gameplay if you have a tile if you have this tile i6 in gameplay, you pick it up out of the bag, then you can instantly turn it over in the middle of the companies because you cannot play it to connect the companies because they're both safe. So that tile is rendered useless, so you just turn it over, you pick out another tile that you can use where you can use it. At the end of the game, when it's all decided, all the borders, that's when we play Mega Choir Till, when all the borders are decided. You can set time limits a lot of times we'll set two hour limits, but we've learned how to make quick decisions. Games can take a long time if people take a long time to decide where they're playing their tile or how many stocks to buy. So we set a time limit of two hours so that we started getting better at making decisions, playing our tiles, getting our stock spot, because we wanted to fill the whole board. That's how long we like to play so that every border is decided. And then once you get to the end of the game, we lay down all the pegs that might still be in here to fill in, make sure we didn't lose any pegs. And then we start pulling off all the turnover pegs to expose the border. And at the end of the game, you just count up all the companies, start with your smallest one, count up how much is in there, figure out your payouts, because the first person with the most stocks gets first majority, person with the second gets second majority. Then you sell all the stocks and Count the money and see who wins. Now, it doesn't matter if you got first majority in the biggest company. That's not going to make you the winner. What makes you the winner is how much money you can generate as this is going. If you keep putting up companies and taking them down and getting more cash and then putting up another company and taking it down and getting more cash, you know, the more cash you generate during this whole process also adds to whatever you might end up with at the end. You have to find that perfect mix and the perfect balance. And in this particular game, um, it ended up generating a lot of cash in this game. The winner had 91,000. Second place was 82,800. Third place was 80,200. And third, fourth place, 77,600 in this game, which was a lot of cash. There was a lot of flurry going on in this game. The rule booklet explains it all in good detail. And we've redesigned the rule booklet with a different picture on it. And it, it's a few pages to give you every, every scenario that there might be in the game. And after I made Mega Choir, I made a stock price extension, which tells you if you got so many on a, on a company that has $1,200, if you got nine of them, it's going to be $10,800 on your payout if you're selling your stocks. Makes it a little easier on figuring out how the payouts are. This time around, Mega Choir 2, it'll all be in one booklet. So you have a stock price extension with your rules. Anyway, hopefully that explains a bit of how this game works. Um, and I don't really want to keep talking and talking. So just wanted to at least give those people who don't know how it works a closer look at it. And even you that have seen it um, but don't own a copy, at least you now get to see it a little bit better. 
and thank you very much for your support on Kickstarter.